to be here and uh, quite an honor to be recognized by all of you. Uh, this is really a unique, unique place. I was chatting with some of the students earlier today and I asked them what they were studying and I got answers like computer games, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, computer games, <laughs> genetic algorithms, neural nets, computer games. <laughs> And I don't usually get answers like that when I ask students that question. And those are exactly the uh, topics that I'm interested in. And those are the topics that are going to change the world. Computer games, in fact, is the harbinger of virtual reality, where we're going to be spending a lot of our time in the future. And it's really the cutting edge of computation and artificial intelligence and many other fields that will really deeply affect our future world. So I was thinking about how graduating today compares to when I graduated uh, MIT in 1970. Uh, when I went there, MIT had one computer. In fact, that's why I went there. It was so advanced it actually had a computer. Uh, it, took, it took up half a building. You needed influence to get close to it. You get a few seconds of time and hand you run the computer parts. And the computer, I mean today, the computer in your pocket is a million times cheaper but a thousand times more powerful. There's a billion fold increase in price performance. So we really have the power to change the world in our hands. Uh, if you wanted to create a movie, you had to be a Hollywood studio or have access to one. Today, a kid in her dorm room, any of you can create a full length motion picture in high definition with a $500 HD camera and, and your PC. Uh, if you wanted to create a recorded album, you needed access to millions of dollars of recording equipment. Now you need Pro Tools and other software new knowledge. And these technologies that are democratizing the tools of creativity and enabling these disruptive changes are growing at an exponential pace. They're doubling in power every year. And it's not just Moore's Law. It's really anything having to do with information. I mean, take the Genome Project, for example. When that was announced, Mainstream skeptics said, collect the general in 15 years? There's no way you're going to do that. We just had our best PhD students and most advanced equipment around the world. We collected one ten thousandths of the general in 1989. This is going to take centuries. And halfway through the project, the skeptics were going strong and saying, I told you this wasn't going to work. You're halfway through the project and you finished 1% of the project. But that was right on schedule for an exponential progression. It was doubling every year. And you double something every year. You start out doubling little numbers. By the time you get to 1%, you're only seven doublings away from doing the whole project. And that's exactly what happened. The amount of genetic data continued to double every year. The price continued to come down by half every year. The project was done seven years later, a year ahead of schedule. Same thing is through the internet and, and lots of other progressions. I was just asked along with Larry Page to uh, develop an energy plan for the United States and the world uh, based on different emerging technologies for the National Academy of Engineering. We looked around and saw that now they were applying nanotechnology, which many of you have studied, to solar panels, which is a form of information technology. The costs are coming down dramatically. The amount of solar energy is growing exponentially. It's doubling, not every year, every two years. But it's done that for 20 years. So it's doubled 10 times. It's only eight doublings away from meeting 100% of our energy needs. Is there really enough sunlight to do that? There's 10,000 times more than we need. We only have to capture one part of 10,000 of the sunlight and meet all of our energy needs. And that's exactly what we're going to do uh, over the next couple of decades. And it is really only these exponentially growing technologies that have the scale and the power to address the, the major challenges of the world today, whether it's energy and the environment, or health and longevity, poverty, uh, you know, people very often are pessimistic because of another trend that we see the world's problems with far greater clarity. There's a battle in Fallujah. You see, it's right in your living room. If there's ideas, and you have to have passion to carry them out. And, but, you know, having come here at this very unique institution and uh, graduating uh, you know, with, with the distinction that this uh, university represents, uh, obviously, all of you do have passion. And you should try to anticipate the future. The reason I got into this technology forecasting is because of my interest in being an inventor 
And I realized that the key to being successful is not just getting my gadgets to work, because every inventor does that. And, but most inventors fail because the timing is wrong. And so I began to be an ardent student of technology trends. And being an engineer, I got a lot of data. And I've discovered a pretty unexpected phenomenon. If you, know, if you ask me, you know, will this company succeed or fail, that's hard to predict. But if you ask me, you know, what is the trajectory of the price performance of computing or the cost of genetic sequencing or the spatial resolution of brain scanning, any of these measures, number of bits being moved around on the internet, these measures of information technology, they follow amazingly predictable trajectories, which in fact are exponential. So you can tell where these technologies will be. And so if you're going to do a project that takes three or four years, plan your project for the world that will exist when you finish the project. The pace of change because of this exponential growth is getting faster and faster. I mean, think back to just when you started here. Uh, wikis, blogs, social networks were really nascent. Uh, you know, when you started high school eight years ago, most people didn't use search engines. Imagine life without search engines. That sounds like ancient history. That was only eight years ago. So the pace of change is, is accelerating and you should look ahead and plan for the world that's coming. And technology ultimately is what moves the world. That doesn't mean everybody has to be a technologist. I just got back from a music conference and looked like a computer conference because the technology is very sophisticated in every field, including music, graphic arts, and so on. But technology is really ultimately what moves the world. I mean, I'll give you just one example. Take Bernoulli's principle. It's a subtle scientific principle that there's slightly less air pressure over a moving curved surface than a flat surface. And there's still arguments by scientists as to why that is, and Bernoulli's principle is not really fully understood from a scientific perspective. But engineers and technologists didn't wait for the scientists to settle that problem. They took that subtle concept and focused it and amplified its powers and created the whole world of aviation. So that is the power of engineering, to take a phenomena and multiply it billionfold and create new powers. So ultimately we will transform health and longevity and, and prosperity. These are the technologies that can overcome the world's problems. The, the growth and power of these technologies I believe is inexorable, but that doesn't mean that some people say, well, why should I just sit, sit back? Because uh, it's going to happen anyway. The power is, is inexorable, but what we do with it is not. That future history has not been written. And whether we apply it to expand our creativity and overcome human suffering on the one hand, or to be destructive on the other, and technology has always been a double-edged sword ever since we had fire and stone tools, that is, those decisions are really in our hands. So this is a great time to be graduating. This is a very creative institution, and uh, as a futurist, I predict a wonderful, successful future for all of you. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>